have so many people here tonight to join us for our official opening of 10,000 Miles from Home, the retrospective exhibit of Sylvia Davis Patricelli. As you see, they are beautiful paintings. We are so thrilled to have nine of the paintings as part of our collection. Three of those paintings are on display tonight. Susan Regan, the daughter of Sylvia Davis Patricelli, was very generous in donating these nine paintings that have West Hartford connections, and we're just thrilled to have them as, as part of the museum's permanent collection, and thrilled to have this exhibit on display. When we, we hung it, we, we said, wow, it really looks like an art gallery now. You know, it's wonderful to come every day and, and to look at these paintings, and there's um, such a breadth of variety and technique um, and as we'll learn from Susan in a minute, Sylvia painted for her entire life. So we have this great retrospective from the 1930s the whole way to the 1980s. I would like to introduce Susan Regan, who is also the host of Connecticut Valley Views. I actually met Susan when she came to interview me as the new executive director back in probably September, right after I had first started. And we've been in contact ever since and have been work, working very closely together to, to make this exhibit happen. And she's a pleasure to work with and I'm just thrilled to have her here tonight. So thank you, Susan. I hope you had a chance to see the video um, because there were some highlights there of obviously Eleanor Roosevelt opening my mother's first exhibit. But I, I do want to thank Jennifer for all of her help and her support. Um, she she in, indeed has been a pleasure to work with, as has Sheila Daly, too. So I'm delighted to be able to bring this to the public and to have you be here. And I certainly welcome, I, I want to speak extemporaneously. So if you have any questions while I'm talking, please feel free to ask the questions because it's here for you to learn about my mother, to learn about the collection because the paintings are here for sale. They will actually be up for auction. And we are donating, I'm donating 20% of the sale of the proceeds to the West Hartford Historical Society. And will there also be a scholarship that will be set up for a West Hartford graduate student, either from public or private school, uh, who is graduating in 2016, who wants to pursue a career in the fine arts. So I encourage you to speak to your friends. Um, you should certainly contact me. if you have to answer any questions about it. That will be going on for the next two months. And there will actually be two to three paintings that will be on eBay as well. Um, let, me, let me just start out by saying that um, I call this 10,000 miles from home because my mother was from Sydney, Australia, as am I. I was born in Sydney as well. And my mother always talked about going home as Australians or Aussies do. And in turn, my father met my mother and he left his home in America, which was 10,000 miles from home. And to give you just a very brief background, it was six months before prior to World War II. My mother's father was uh, Leslie James Davis, was actually a gold mining gentleman. And he said to my mother, who had graduated from the Royal Academy of Fine Arts when she was 15 years old, was being recognized as one of the finest young artists in Australia. And to, at the time, she was about 20 years old. He said, I'm going on a gold mining trip you need to come with me, you need to paint the Solomon Island natives because with the war coming, these people, these uncivilized people, the most uncivilized people in the world are going to be gone. That civilization will end. So she did, she accompanied, they were there uh, for about four to five months. My mother completed 40 paintings. She returned with my father back to Sydney. There was an opening of the exhibition in, by Lady Gowrie, who would be someone similar to the president's wife here in the United States. And uh, she and a number of paintings were sold there. Actually, one of the paintings went to Windsor Castle as well. And now the war comes about. My father was destined to go to China. Uh, he ended up, because of Pearl Harbor, ended up being on the press corps for General Eisenhower, for General MacArthur. And when he, uh, in, in that happening, he in turn ended up in Australia. He saw a picture of my mother and he saw the article about her and her exhibition. Now he was a writer and he thought, what an interesting combination, what a beautiful woman. So he was very pursuant of her and, uh, and she thought he was a very um, 
a brash young American. Now, there were many of the Australian women who were swept off their feet by the GIs. And the reason was is because the Australian men, still are today, I think, but were uh, a little offhand with the women. And the GIs were courting them with chocolates and flowers and so forth. <laughs> so there were thousands of these war brides that came over to the United States. My mother, I kind of think, put him off for a while, but, but eventually, uh, obviously, he, he, he persisted, and uh, they were married in Australia. And as I said, I was born there. And then my mother had to, we had to wait for about 14 months before he could come over. He came home after the war, and then uh, we actually, my father built a house in North Granby. Um, so that gives you the kind of general background. Now, Move to the next chapter, she comes here, and because of that association with Lady Gallery, uh, there was quite a bit, my mother was becoming known here, it turned out that um, Eleanor Roosevelt heard about my mother and wanted to host and open her exhibition at G. Fox and Company, which happened in Sentinel Hill Hall in 1951. And during that video, you can see her actually speaking. If you go on the website, www.sylviadavisart.com, you can see that there. You can see the entire video. You'll see Mrs. Roosevelt speaking. She also wrote about my mother in her column that she wrote on a weekly basis called My Day. So that was uh, a pretty exciting thing. So continued on, and as a few years went by, my parents moved to West Hartford, which is where I spent most of my growing years. Uh, my mother became well known in West Hartford. She taught at the West Hartford Art League. Um, she also taught the Ursuline nuns at the time. They were allowed to come and visit her studio, and she taught them there. Um, my mother painted many commissioned portraits while she was here, and uh, so she enjoyed a very full life, and it was very in a very interesting life. And to begin so you will recognize some of the people. I did hear a comment that they didn't recognize John Murphy. Uh, that's the gentleman in the green jacket. He was the pro at the Farmington Country Club. Uh, for many years, but he was in his late late 20s, early 30s when that painting was done. Part of the other excitement of this collection, I think, is, is not only um, the people that she painted, some of the places. Now, my mother painted, this is the ICO, um, and that was, I believe, 1964, so that was originally at, in Weathersfield. Uh, you'll recognize Ben Hogan down there, a little bit further down, Arnold Palmer. All of these occurred because my father was a golfer. He was a member of the Connecticut PGA. Uh, he worked very closely with John Murphy um, to bring about the first certified program for golfers who were going to go on the PGA Tour or become club pros. So that actually gave him a business background as well as their actual attributes for becoming a good club pro. So that was the relationship there. But because of my father's interest in golf, they decided they would go on the pro tour for a year, which he did, and he wrote a column on a daily basis, and it was called On the Tour, and he submitted to the Hartford Current on a weekly basis, and he was writing a book about the tour called From Tea to Greenbacks. He became very close friends with all of, all of the golfers, in, including Chi Chi Rodriguez and, and um, Arnold Palmer, um, and so forth, and the publisher, wanted to publish a book that would give intimate kind of National Enquirer details in order to sell the book, and my father would not do it. He said, no, because I know them personally, I would not do it. So that book never got published because of that. But while they were on the tour, my mother painted the paintings of all the famous golfers, and they did. They would pose for probably maybe one to two sittings, and then she would complete them by photograph. So that's part of another collection. We have a gentleman here, Alan Bond. Uh, he was actually the sponsor of the Australia uh, Two, which was in 1983. I don't know if any of you might recall, but in uh, Newport, Rhode Island, they have the America's Cup, and there was a big flap back then, as the Australians call something, a big flap, uh, about the keel, because they won the cup. And I think it was, they had taken it away from the Americans, not in 122 years had they lost. The, uh, the cup until the Australians came along with this boat. But they took the keel, they took the whole boat out of the water, it was examined and so forth, and found out that it was perfectly within regulations, and so they retained the, retained the trophy. Um, in between um, studies, as it were, my mother did many floral paintings. Um, she would do things that would strike her fancy, some of the paintings that 
Uh, I've donated to the West Hartford Historical Society War of West Hartford. She painted the houses that were around her. Um, she painted the uh, painting of my father, which is in the other room uh, next to my mother. Um, she would then also do some idea paintings, concept paintings, and one of those is the Holocaust, which is hanging on the back wall over there, and um, that is about representative of shoes that were from all the people that died during the Holocaust, things from little children's shoes to other people's shoes. And the word in Jewish is Shoah, which means Holocaust. So that's very symbolic. My mother was uh, very interested in, in, in the history of life and what happened to people. Now, I, I've kind of taken you a whirlwind through that, and I'm open to any questions that you might have um, about the paintings, about the people she painted, about her background, uh, her career, uh, anything about our family. You probably recognize the name Patricelli. Bob Patricelli is my cousin. Leonard was the president of TIC. Uh, so you know that. What else would you like to know? Well, you answered one of the questions okay. there at the end, but the, the Solomon Island yes. paintings, one of them is of some minor. Yes, actually, you're, you're very observant. Yes, actually, he was in that painting. Those were his colleagues, um, and that, and that um, I would see as a very important part because museums tend to um, believe that scenes in a special place are as important as a one-person portrait. So that was a capturing of a scene. So yes, those are the gold miners there, and yes, he was in the picture. I think he is the second one from the left, I believe. Yes, in the back. What year did your mother paint that portrait of General MacArthur? Um, that was around 1963. Now that one was painted from a photograph. That was not that was not the general. But my father did work on it, and of course that was all part of part and parcel of the whole thing. She also did subsequently a portrait after the um, exhibition. She did a portrait of Eleanor, which is still hanging in our home. Anyone who is interested in that painting can certainly give me a call. I'd be happy to have you see that. That will be for sale as well, that price to be discussed at that point. Beautiful painting. She really captured her in such a lovely way. Exactly. Oh, it's, it's, it's extremely elegant because, unfortunately, most people refer to her as an unattractive woman, which I think is, I find, um, a very cruel thing to say because she contributed so much to the world. She contributed so much to her husband's background when he couldn't walk. She, she spoke on his behalf, so to even talk about what she looked like I think is just out of the question. But it, it's a very flattering painting. And then she also um, did Beatrice Fox Auerbach. I remember going to the Auer farm and playing with her grandchildren while she painted. She actually sat for all the sittings for that painting. And then they bought that painting. She hung it in, her, in G. Fox and Company until she died, and when she died, that painting hung in the front window for about a month or so, and then the family, as I understand it, has that painting now. Anything else I can, yes? You said that they, that your grandfather wanted your mom to go with him to the mining because the war was coming. How did she, how did he know that there was a war coming? Well, there had been rumors of what was going on because of all the conversations with, you know, all, all of the things he, he knew. I mean, he was a very astute man. And when you uh, understand, when you see the red flags and the warning signs, he knew that there would be something that would change this uncivilized world. Now, just to give you a little background on these natives. When they, fir when they first got there, they were not used to seeing white men but they were definitely not used to seeing any white women at all. Or uh, the fact she was blonde and that she was young, and so she couldn't get anybody to sit for the paintings at first. They were afraid of her. They thought she was a white witch. They finally convinced them after much talking, and the chief of the tribe agreed to have his painting done. Of course, once they capture the image, now they think that she owns their soul. And, and so that was another frightening aspect. But obviously as time went on, and there, there are two pictures here, one's called the Shy Piccaninny and the Laughing Piccaninny. Mm -hmm. and, and the Shy Piccaninny was the one that was afraid at first, but her mother tied a lizard to her toe and kept her kind of amused and it, it got her laughing and so forth. So that's how she ended up with, with that too. But, um, 
it, it, it was a very interesting time for my mother, and as it turned out, my grandfather was absolutely correct. And so the, literally and actually, it is the only collection of those people at that time in the world. You also said there's an auction. Is there an auction site? Um, it, it will be on eBay. I know that Jennifer can um, give you information about that. They will have, I believe the way Jennifer is going to have it is we will have, just as you would for a silent auction if you went to a black tie affair, there will actually be, is that the way you're going to do it, Jennifer? We're going to have it, uh, uh, things so that people can come in, sign up for the painting that they're interested in, and it will be there for two months so that you can, you know, add in increments of whatever's there. This is the first time I've done anything with these paintings uh, for many years, and I've had them in my own home. And I felt that one of the best ways to share some of that was to donate some to the West Hartford Historical Society. But uh, paintings, as you know, are marketed in different ways. Um, there's the modern art. Some people make their name in a certain way. But my mo what my mother has done here is not only with the quality of the paintings, but she has provided a historic background that doesn't exist anyplace else. You'll see some of the paintings. There are two here. One is the children's, the inside of the children's playhouse and the, the exterior and the interior, and that's at Hyde Park before the restoration in the late 70s. So that's another collection um, of, of a type two. So there, I think there's something here for everyone. Um, I encourage you to contact Jennifer about the bidding. Uh, certainly welcome any contact you would like to um, speak with me about it. I'd be happy to do so. Um, any other questions I can? Yes. Which are some of your favorites? Oh, well, one of my favorites is Ben Hogan. I, 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 that because anybody who is a golfer uh, knows that golfers have this kind of, kind of this resting the stick on their shoulder, and in that half dark, half light, it's a, it's an absolute study of him. He, he, I mean, that really that was the man with his white cap. There's another interesting one of Chichi Rodriguez. He was, as some of you golfers will know, he probably weighed about 120 pounds. He was about five foot four, I think. Uh, and when he, um, when he swung the club, he would swing with such velocity that he literally would rise up off the ground. He'd kind of it, it literally come off, off the ground. And uh, he, when he made a good putt, a long putt, he would take his Panama hat off and put it over the putting hole. So that's the charcoal sketch that she did. Who was the man, the second man of the That's Alan Bond. He was the sponsor of the Australian too. Uh, the ship that won the America's Cup in 1983. And, and there, there's, there are more than, than that gentleman in the Newport collection as well. This is another one. This one actually happens to be the boat, the Canada, which was also in 1983. I don't know what position they came in, uh, but it was another one that, that my mother did too. So um, anything else? Yes, Jennifer. I was wondering if you could tell us about the two paintings in the hallway. Yep. This Yes. Yes. And then also perhaps the Hillstead one. Oh yes, the Hillstead. the Hillstead. The Hillstead one. All right. Um, that one is actually love letters from home, and that of course would refer to that's another idea painting, is a concept painting, in that letters from home we often a child is away, but more traditionally in this particular case, this would be soldiers writing home, and many people collect the letters or, or donate the letters from families and keep them as a keepsake. Uh, they've been in a family, but then they will donate them because they're part of the war. The Hillstead painting, uh, my husband and I actually had the opportunity to live on the Hillstead property for about five years. Do you know, are you familiar with the Farmington Avenue and there's a colonial home? It was originally built in 19, 1696, I think, and rebuilt in 1704, but burnt down by the Indians in the territory, and we thought we would be able to buy the home, uh, sort of a rent with option to buy. As it turned out, it, um, it could not be sold because of the terms of the will. Um, so that didn't come about, but while we stayed there, my mother did that painting. We happened to have our horses on the property, and there was a ghost in the house, and the ghost was a very friendly ghost. Uh, it was a very interesting story. I'll bore you with that one very quickly. My father, if you take a look at his painting, he was a very stern man, and I think you'll see that in the painting. And he was not one to play a practical jokes. So he said to us when we moved into the house, which had absolutely no insulation at all, no insulation, 
and um, there was a, an opening in the wall where the stove pipe would go. And he said, you need to put up one of those pie plate things, you know, the spring things that you put in the pie. And he said, you need to put, and, and, and I can say that Mrs. K knows my father, so she knows that he was a very serious fellow. Um, but he uh, said, you've got to put one of those pie plate things up. And I said, Dad, we've got a lot of things to do. I don't have time. To, I'll figure it out later. Well, he went on, and he harped on it quite a bit. And so finally, well, winter was coming, and uh, one day I came home, and I found one of those things on the porch. So I called him up, and I said, you finally went, got one of those things for us, didn't you? My father said, I have no clue what you're talking about. So as I said, he was not a practical joker, so I knew when he told me it wasn't him, it wasn't him. So we went to the caretaker on the property. He was the only other person who would possibly know about this. And we said, did you put this? And I said, no, I didn't drop anything off. And there was no one else. There was no one else who knew about it. So uh, we took it, we put it up, we figured it was the ghost. And we would hear marbles rolling around, <laughs> and lights had stayed on in the attic when we were sure we turned the lights off. And then what followed up to that is after we moved out of the house and we moved on to another permanent home, uh, turns out the director lives there now for the Hillstead property. And when we mentioned that to her, she said, oh yes, there's definitely a ghost there and he's friendly. So there was no question at all, there's definitely, definitely a ghost there. But uh, yeah, so my mother painted that painting and, uh, and that's a, a, a wonderful remembrance. Any other questions I can answer? I don't, I don't want to bore anybody. I just want to give you as much information as I can. Uh, yes? Are the other paintings in private collections, or are any of them um, on exhibition? Well, uh, are, are you talking about, I have other paintings at my home. Uh, the other collections, are, well, they're all the commission portraits. Um, that the, the Boatners, my mother actually did a painting of Mrs. Mrs. Boatner. That was a commission portrait, so that was hanging in the American School for the Deaf. She did the Mrs. Auerbach one. She also did one of Judge Case, a uh, well-known name in the Granby area, the Case family. Um, there were uh, numerous ones that she did uh, across the thing, and so there are, they're in very, various places, yes. 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 Okay. Anything else I can answer for you? Okay. Okay, yeah. Um, so we have pamphlets here that describe, obviously give a description of each of the paintings, when they were painted, where they were painted, and what medium it's in. Um, and to take one of those and to share them with your friends, you can certainly go on the website um, that's there about my mother's paintings. Uh, Jennifer, I know, will be in touch uh, with you. Contact her or contact me with regard to the auction of the paintings. Um, we'll answer any questions you have. And I, I encourage you to have your friends come Hopefully, and, and I say this, and, and I truly mean this, one of the things that I told Jennifer, I said, I lived a great deal of my life in West Hartford, uh, now live in Granby on a beautiful farm where I can have my horses and my dogs, but West Hartford was my home for a long time. If we can attract more members to this facility, because there's something here to see and it brings people here, it's truly one of my objectives. And if I can donate a goodly sum of money, I'd be more than happy to do so. And I'd be more than happy to send um, uh, a young student on to art school with uh, something that they can remember. And it will be called the Sylvia Davis Patricelli. Uh, How long is it going to be here? Two months, is that right? It's going to be here through the end of July, I think through the end of July. Yes. yes. Anything else I can answer for you? It's, it's www.sylviadavisart.com. And I, I actually have cards. Uh, I left some with you, Jennifer. Do you have them? Okay, so there are little, little business cards, if you will. Jennifer can put those out. You can take those. And you can, how to contact me, how to find the website, so forth, find out more about me. One thing, um, I, I encourage you to go on the website and look at the thing about Eleanor Roosevelt. There are very few places I can imagine that you would get to hear her speak at, you know. Um, you know, she's got a wonderful voice, very cultured voice. And uh, it, was, it was an interesting time. It, it was sponsored, actually, by not only G. Fox and Company, but WTIC. Um, and, and so it was very important that, uh, I mean, they had, it, it, it held great sway in the Hartford area for a long time. So that's it. So I'm delighted. Do you have anything else? Are you going to stay around for a little bit? Oh, yeah, I'll, I'll hang around. Any so questions?
Susan's going to stay around, so as you walk around the exhibit, please feel free to ask her questions. And um, there are so many games for our small species.